Wait two years before Daryl's dogs arrived here. But the clock is ticking. It takes months to train the dogs, and Daryl is desperate that no more animals lose their lives. Three months on, and we've come to Wales to see the dogs being put through some extreme training. We're also going to see if they've got what it takes. Joshua Kuval is stepping into the shoes of a poacher. He's volunteering to be chased and bitten by the dogs while wearing a bite suit. Do you train the dog to, to bite or do you train it to just hold? Uh, we, we train the dog to, to bite, obviously. All of the dogs target the arms, so we do inside bites and uh, outside bites. What we try and teach the dogs to do is target what they're offered. Yeah! You look behind you, the dog's 30 metres away, another yeah! glance and he's right on you. At 30 miles per hour, the momentum lifts the dog off the ground. What we train the dogs to do is actually give an indication of a direction of fire and they will actually lead the handler in that direction so we can then give chase and give an apprehension, which is what you're seeing here. It's the hottest day of the summer. Rogue and Polaris are now getting a day trip to the zoo. It's a chance to meet animals they'll see in Africa, but hopefully they won't be this close. These dogs have got to find out exactly where their position is. Within that, with that, you know, within that environment that they must know that, because dogs will generally react and either fight or fly and what we want these dogs to do is remain stable under pressure. We don't want a dog that's suddenly going to run off and start chasing wildlife. <laughs> oh, that was sad. This training is taking place before the public are allowed into the zoo. We've seen the rhinos. Let's see how they get on with the giraffes. What we try and do is make the dogs realise that lions, elephants, rhinos are obviously things to be, to be a little bit wary of, but obviously just as much as part of the environment as the trees and, and, and the rest of the environment itself. After months of hard work, Rogue and Polaris finally step onto African soil. It's August 2016. Daryl will leave them here while they continue their training. This is the first time they've been paired with their new handlers. This is the first walk out. Their new home is the Save Valley Conservancy, 3,000 square kilometers. It's also home to 200 rhinos and 2,000 elephants. Polaris is sitting on the back of this truck, being chased by one of the animals he's been trained to protect. Perhaps not quite the welcome he was expecting. Meanwhile, his brother Bo has safely been deployed to Makamazi National Park in Tanzania. But because of restrictions there, we haven't been allowed to film him. Polaris? Polaris, speak. Five months later, Daryl has returned to Zimbabwe to see how they're getting on. Rogue. Rogue, speak. Speak. That's not going to. Rogue, wait. Daryl's dogs continue training even though they're now fully operational. Wait, 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 wait. They're the only anti-poaching dogs in Africa not on a lead, tracking eight kilometers at a time. So how successful have your dogs been so far in Africa? We've seen a definite downward sort of turn in the poaching because there is an inherent fear of dogs in Africa. We sent out a very clear message to everyone else that if you come onto the conservancy and you intend to poach, then you're not going to leave. Man and dog working together to save animals that otherwise could soon become extinct. Within seven years, we won't have rhino and elephant. That, that's, that's the simple message. That's why I do what I do. That's the whole purpose of what we do. It, it's, it's making a difference for future generations, isn't it? As we said, I don't want my grandchildren to look at animals in a picture book. Our last story is about a chap called Callum. Now, at three years old, Callum from Peterborough was diagnosed with severe autism. But now, he's a top athlete. In fact, he's an ice skater representing Britain in the Special Olympics. The skaters at this rink in Peterborough might not pay much attention to this young man. But if they knew his story, they'd certainly be impressed. 23-year-old Callum Titmus is severely autistic. The condition affects his learning and communication skills. I've watched him as he's developed into Britain's top Special Olympic skater. While Callum is at ease on the ice, daily life 
is not so straightforward. remember vividly is obviously with this diagnosis and doing the research I was upset uh, and Adam just said to me he's still Callum and it's so true he is still Callum um, but we just deal with the challenges that turn up with each day <laughs> Uh, Huddle, yes. yes. You can show them how good you are at Candy Crush or one of those games. Callum, who comes from Peterborough, was three years old when he was diagnosed with autism. The condition affects about one in a hundred people in the UK. It has an impact on the way a person communicates and how they experience the world around them. Over a period of time, you realise there's an issue and there's the whole guilt thing. Could I have done something different? Have I done something wrong? Why have we bred an autistic child, um, all those sorts of, I mean, it's stupid, you can't, but, but you do. And all those points, you've got to get all those, have you? And can you see the forest at the back? A forest? Look at the forest. And the trees and bushes grow around. Yeah, they do, don't they? Although Callum finds it difficult to communicate, he has a remarkable memory for certain facts. They tend to be about things he's a big fan of, which includes pretty much every single Disney movie ever made. Frozen in 2013. Oh, is that your favourite, is it? Yes. Ah, I didn't know that. Right, so... Mary Poppins. 1964. Jungle Book. 1967. Snow White. 1937. Pinocchio. 1940. Cinderella 2. <laughs> 2001. Excellent. Callum is also a big sports fan and loves taking part in different activities. But it's ice skating, which is his favourite. To say he gets excited about coming to Peterborough Ice Rink is something of an understatement. Do the jump, so you can skate around and do the jump here in front of us. Okay? Do you understand? Yeah. Go on. Keep the body still, Callum. There, strong. And push up. Good man. Callum is so good that he's now a member of the British Special Olympic team. He's won more than 30 medals for his skating, and he's only getting better. Good job, Callum. OK. Good job. What are the challenges of teaching someone like him who suffers with a condition like autism? Just got to be patient with him. There's nothing that he can't do that an, that an able-bodied person can do. Um, it just takes time. Just time, time and patience, um, and keeping things simple. And to give it some sort of context, how much of an achievement is this? Massive. Absolutely massive. There's no words that can really describe how big an achievement this is. How good is he? Callum's good. Yeah, he is good. For the difficulties he has to face, he's doing an amazing job. Um, the stuff he is doing, the technical stuff, the jumps, the spins, uh, there are people who don't have his difficulties and they can't do them. So, yeah, he's doing fantastic. Karen, what is it about ice skating that, that almost brings out a different Callum? I don't know. 
I mean, but he quite clearly in, enjoys it. He loves being on the ice. Um, you know, and you, you see that in his reaction, on his face, in the noises he makes. And he looks physically, emotionally to be enjoying it. What does it do for you and, and Adam watching? I'm just happy that he's happy. Can you cut it into pieces about so long? All the way through, about that long. Wonderful. Just the job. Looking after Callum and making sure he gets the proper care doesn't come cheap. The family estimate they spend around £20,000 every year organising care and activities for him. I'm never going to retire. <laughs> I'm never going to retire. We've got no savings. And you're not, I'm not kidding, really, we've got no savings. Yeah. We funded, or self-funded, self -funded. a lot of Callum's things. Um, and what if you didn't? He wouldn't do. And how would, it, would, how would it affect him? He would be stuck in a room watching a screen 24-7. He'd be watching Disney movies all the time. And children's television programmes. I don't think that's a lie for anybody. And also, and, and, and also getting bored and frustrated and breaking things. Yeah. What do you what want? Do you want? Next? Yeah. Pudding. You want pudding. pudding. And what, what pudding, pudding do you want? Um, um, vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. I hope okay. You got some. We'll go. You get these life-affirming moments. You have to keep reminding yourself of it sometimes because there are difficult times, obviously. But you don't think in terms of oh, we'll do this because we get something back. We do get lots back, but you do it for Callum. Callum is not an angel, but then you get the other side when you see him standing in front of the Union Jack singing the national anthem, and I am a very proud parent. Um, the things he's achieved are phenomenal. Oh you know. Gosh. Uh, Got across that's what? That's, that's really it, hard. yes. <laughs> Would you like to see a photo of. Uh... Look at that. <laughs> Are you representing Great Britain there? Yeah. And what other flags are there? Canada, yeah. America. United States of America, Great Britain. Yes. yes. Three Actually. podiums. Yes. yes. And, you, and you beat all of them, Callum. Yes. That was very good. Callum is currently in Austria for the Special Winter Olympics, hoping his training here in Peterborough pays off. And the very best of luck to Callum. Now, next week on the programme, we spend some time with Lowry Love, who's trying to prevent his extradition to the United States on hacking charges. It's just absurd that someone should be sent to the foreign prison system, which leaves a lot to be desired. But in the meantime, if you want to get in touch with me about any stories you think we should be doing, I'm on Twitter at David underscore Inside Out or email david.whiteley at bbc.co.uk. They all get passed on to the team. But that's it for this week from Norwich. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Also next week, Richard Daniel investigates how often raw sewage is being pumped into our rivers and estuaries. And it's the 350th anniversary of the first ever land battle of the predecessors of the Royal Marines against an invading army. It took place in Suffolk. That's Inside Out next Monday, 7.30 on BBC One.